أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون إن الصفا والمروة من شعائر الله فمن حج البيت أو اعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوف بهما ومن تطوى خيرا خيرا فإن الله شاكر عليم In the name of Allah, the most beneficial, the most merciful. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 152 to 158, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that, Remember me, I will remember you, and thank me, and never be ungrateful. O believers, seek comfort in patience and prayer. Allah is truly with those who are patient. Never say that those martyred in the cause of Allah are dead. In fact, they are alive. But you don't prescribe. We will certainly test you with a touch of fear and famine and loss of property, life and crops. Give good news to those who patiently endure, who when, fo when faced with a disaster say, surely to Allah we belong and Him we, we will all return. They are the ones who will receive Allah's blessings and mercy and it is they who are rightly guided. Indeed, the hills of Safa and Marwa are among the symbols of Allah. So whoever performs the pilgrimage, let them walk between the two hills. And whoever does good, good willingly, Allah is truly appreciative, all-knowing. رحم الله من قرع الفاتحة
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي My dear elders, brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh All praise is due to Allah who has given us this opportunity to gather once again in the remembrance of Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. I would like to congratulate first of all the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajjalallahu ta'ala farajahu sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And to all the mu'mineen on this very gra great occasion of the wiladat of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. The lady Zainab is such a special lady that with whose names mention only the believers get a certain fire in their hearts. It is because this lady took the mission of Imam Hussein further and made sure that Islam is saved and made sure that today we are able to gather here. We gathering here is a direct effect of Bibi Zainab alayhi salam. When Bibi Zainab alayhi salam was born to Imam Ali and Bibi Fatima, they were very happy and they told the Prophet and the Prophet was informed. The Prophet rushed towards the home. He rushed and he picked up this beautiful baby and smiled and was so happy but just at that moment, his face turned pale and he started crying. He started crying and weeping and Imam Ali asked, what is the reason for these tears? He said, I have be just been informed of how badly this young lady will be treated, of how oppressed she will be, of how she will be paraded, but she will always remain steadfast. After saying that, the Prophet said, and I have also been informed that I should name her Zainab. That means the pride of her father. Recite a salawat, please. You see, we have such great personalities in Islam, in our, uh, in our religion, and it is but our duty to take lessons from them. We cannot just keep saying how great they were if we do not apply even one lesson from their lives. So today, tonight, inshallah, we are going to uh, uh, touch on a few lessons that we learned from this great lady. The first lesson that I would like to share with all of us and with myself as well is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This lady manifested the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll explain how. First of all, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the fuel, the, the, the best fuel for our souls. You know, like when a person is, uh, has run out of sugar in his body, we say sugar, niche thai yuche, he's, he's unconscious now. What he needs is glucose, yeah? The same way our soul is in a state where it's, it needs Allah's love. We need that love inside our souls in order to run, in order to, to, be, to spiritually elevate. You see, sometimes we say that ah, Allah is, uh, we are scared of him because Allah is someone who will punish you if you do a sin. But dear brothers and sisters, you know, the fear of Allah is not this kind of fear that we fear that, oh, we are going to be punished. We are, Allah is going to, uh, you know, uh, make us uh, uh, go through a lot of tribulations and trials because we have sinned. It is not like that. What fear of Allah means is what? Let me give you an example. You know a mother and a child, their connection. When the child is, is playing with his friends, a young child, like three, four years old, he'll play with his friends, but his eyes are always on his mother. When the mother turns away and starts walking, he gets a fear. He gets a fear that, oh, my mom is leaving me. I have to go back to her. That is the fear of Allah that we need to have. That we are afraid that Allah will turn away from us that he will not show us his mercy because of our sins. So this is the meaning of fear of Allah. You see when Bibi Zainab alayhi salam, when did she show, show this love of Allah in her? It is when she was in the courtyard of Ibn Ziyad. 
Just picture this scenario where Bibi Zainab in her shackles, part of her hijab is snatched, hungry, thirsty, been through every sort of musibah that you can imagine. And now someone is, Ibn Ziyad is ridiculing her and asking her, how did you find how Allah treated your brother and your family? How did you find everything that happened in the battle of Karbala? Imagine what was her reply. She said, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. I did not see anything but beauty. Just imagine a woman who has seen her own brother being slaughtered, her own baby nephew being killed, her uh, brother's body being trampled. She is saying that I did not see anything but beauty. But oh, Bibi Zainab, what, how, did that be how did you see beauty? It's because she saw the reality of what's happening. She saw that there is a man who gave his life for the sake of Allah. There is a man who has drank from the cup of shahada, of martyrdom. There is a man who l gave away everything in the way of Allah in order to safeguard the religion of Allah. That is the beauty she saw. Recite a salawat please. You see, when we have the love of Allah inside of us, boiling inside of us, when our souls are filled, we have a full tank of Allah's love, then we are not scared of anyone. Then we don't feel any tribulation. That is why Bibi Zainab was saying, I did not see anything but beauty. Imam Bakir salam said that, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Thus, the army of Imam Hussein, when they were fighting, they did not feel the sword striking their bodies because they were drowned in the love of Allah. They were drowned. It was not that they were not getting hurt. The hurt was nothing compared to Allah's love. That is the true love of Allah. We, we need to get this love inside of us. We need to get this kind of love inside of us. Imam Hussein says, what has he lost? He who has gained you. And what has he gained? He who has lost you. This is the love of Allah that Lady Zainab had filled her heart with. And that is why she was able to say, O Allah, accept this qurbani from us. That is when she was able to say, Ma ra'aytu illa jamila. Recite a salawat, please. The second lesson that we learn from this lady is steadfastness. Lady Zainab, Sayyida Zainab, was an unshakable person when it came to her Iman, when it came to her worship. There is no one who can say that Bibi Zainab even for once complained. For once she felt that it was too much for her. She was always steadfast. On the night of Shame Gariba, tents have been burnt. Your, the master, Imam Hussein, has been killed. Children are all over the place. Still, she was able to find that composure and pray her Salatul Layl. Just imagine, us, when there is a small excuse, we leave our namaz. When there is a small excuse, our hijab is, is, uh, is down. A small excuse and we are ready to compromise our beliefs. Brothers and sisters, let us look at the life of Bibi Zainab. You know, there is a verse of the Quran that, that uh, I remember when I, when I think about the steadfastness of Bibi Zainab. It says, قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا That there are those who say that oh, Allah is our Lord and after that they remain steadfast. That is, the, that is the manifestation of Bibi Zainab. But on the other hand, there's another verse of the Quran which I would like to share with you. It says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حرف. From amongst people are those that believe or worship Allah on the edge of a cliff. Just picture a cliff and you're walking on the edge. There are people who worship Allah on the edge of the cliff. And what does the verse say further? It says, when they are given ni'mat, when they are given blessings, oh, they are very happy. When you are given good things, you are given wealth, you are given... Uh, a proper place to live. Ah, you are happy, you are a good Muslim, you are ready to, to give some sadqa because you have the, the, the capacity and you, everything is good. You are a Muslim. 
But when they are faced with a small tribulation, you see that they start complaining. And they start, they say, ah, what is this? Why is Allah doing this to me? You know, why, why, can't, why, can't, why can't Allah see me happy? These are the kind of things that some of us, unfortunately, when we are faced with small tribulations. Now imagine Bibi Zainab's tribulation. Just imagine the amount of musibah that fell that she was known as Ummul Masaib. We need youth in our community who have this unshakable faith, who have this iman that you cannot shake them very easily. Trials and tribulations are part and parcel of our lives. And Allah says that in the Quran that you think that you will say, I believe and I will not test you. Allah will test each and every one of us. Now, where do we get this steadfastness? Of course, we need, the, we need to go back to the first lesson, which is love of Allah. If we have our souls filled with the love of Allah, قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا Then you'll become steadfast. And you need to have ma'rifah of Allah, of course. Recite a salawat, please. <laughs> the third lesson that we get from this holy lady, if I may ask, what was the first lesson? Yeah? Love of Allah. The second one? Steadfastness. This is the third one. Bravery. Just imagine again how Lady Zainab in Sham, when she reached in Sham, at what state she was in. She was chained. Part of her hijab was removed. She was hungry. She was thirsty. She had seen what happened in Kufa. Now she's in Sham where Yazid is proudly telling everyone what he has done. And he's saying, oh, I wish my ancestors from, from Badru are here. They would see that I've taken revenge of their killers. And they would be so happy with me. And he was drinking and there was a party. At that moment, Bibi Zainab gives a speech that shakes the people to the core, that shakes the inner parts of people such that they start crying. That is the bravery that she had. Now, how did she get, the, get this bravery? Just because she was the daughter of Imam Ali? No, it was because that love of Allah was in her heart. Then she was steadfast. Then Allah ex you know, gives you that eloquence in your tongue and that bravery in your heart that you are able to stand up against an oppressor in his face and tell him the truth. Recite a salawat, please. Now, it would not be fair if I did not just say a part of her, her khutbah. The one that we usually hear, there was a khutbah she gave in Kufa, there was a khutbah she gave in Sham. And it would be very, very important for each and every one of us to go and lo have a look at them. I will just read one part of the, the speech that she gave in Sham. So she says, So scheme whatever you wish to scheme, and carry out your plots, and intensify your efforts. For by Allah, you shall never be able to obliterate our mansion, nor will you ever be able to kill the revelation, nor will you ever exalt to attain our position, nor will, you shame, nor will your shame ever be washed away. Your vision shall prove futile, your days are limited in number, and your wealth will be wasted on the day when the caller calls out, the curse of Allah is upon the oppressors. This lady gave such an eloquent and brave speech when she was in the worst of her conditions. Today when I was coming to prepare the, uh, to give this lecture, first of all the mental stress, the amount of time needed to research all this, to write them down, and then I, I was at least a bit confident to come and say something. But this lady, no preparation, no nothing. She was in a state where her brother has been killed, her 18 other Banu Hashim have been killed. She has lost so many children on the way. She has reached a place where she doesn't even have her proper hijab. She's ready to stand up against an oppressor and give such an eloquent speech. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So what lesson do we get from this? is that when you have the love of Allah in your soul, 
when you are steadfast in Allah's path, then you will be able to speak up against any oppression, against any tyrant, whether you are a woman or a man, whether you are in the worst of your situations or the best of your situations, whether you are being trialed and tested by Allah, but yet you have a smile on your face and say that whatever I see is beauty and what whoever is against Allah, even in this my low estate, I'm ready to speak up against oppression. The last lesson, this is not the last lesson, there are many, many lessons that we can learn, but this is for tonight, the last lesson that we learned from this lady, is the lesson of tarbiya. Tarbiya is basically upbringing the children. If you look at her own tarbiya, how she was brought up, she was brought up in the best of households, in Imam Ali's household, in the presence of the Prophet and Bibi Fatima. Imagine at such a young age she had the love of Allah, as I told you, Bibi Zainab is, is one whose love of Allah was something that was instilled from a very young age. When she was told by her father one day, oh Zainab, say one, she said one. And of course before uh, she has been uh, instilled that Allah is one. So she was told say one, she said one, like how we, we uh, sometimes do with the children. Say two, she said, oh my father, how do I say two with the same tongue that has said one? Because Allah is only one. Means her whole life was from the very birth was having that tawheed inside of her. Then she was, one day she asked her father, Oh Imam Ali, how do you, um, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. He, she then asked, do you love Allah? He said, yes, I love Allah. She said, how can you have two loves in one heart? And that is exactly what Tawheed is all about. You can never have two loves in one heart. So Imam Ali said, very well said, but I love you for the sake of Allah. So whatever love that we have, if it's not for the sake of Allah, I'm sorry to say it's a wrong love. Recite a salawat please. You see the tarbiya that Bibi Zainab gave her children. If you look on the, on the, on the day of Ashura, On and Muhammad were thirsty to go and help their uncle. They were ready to give their lives for their uncle, for the way of Allah. Not their uncle, their imam of their time. You see, Bibi Zainab used to sit with them and explain to them, who is this? Who is your uncle? He's not only your uncle, he's the imam of your time. He's not only the imam of your time, he is the grandson of the prophet. He is the one who is going to take you to heaven. He is the one with whom you can never leave alone. She kept on telling them, On and Muhammad, you are to never leave your imam. You are never to run away from this battle. She kept on giving this tarbiya to them and she'd ask them, will you make me proud tomorrow? Will you make me proud and give your life for the sake of Allah? And they happily gave their lives. Now this was the tarbiya that Bibi Zainab was able to give her children. Now let us ask ourselves, in today's times, are we giving this tarbiya to our children? Are we giving enough time to our children explaining to them who the imam of our time is? Who, who, who are we serving? What is our direction in our lives? Is it just to, to become successful in the material sense? Is it just to become a very uh, powerful businessman, have an authority in certain areas and you know, become just a very, uh, a person whom everyone says, ah, wah, wah, bo, bo, che, bo, fine gadi che. Is that the only thing that we are doing tarbiya for children? Or we are giving them the real juice of their souls, that is the love of Allah. We should ask ourselves, and how can this be instilled? One way is the Quran. One of the biggest, biggest ways is the Quran. The Quran has the constitution that has all the, the instructions of how to live our lives. The Quran has all this that we should have. All these lessons that you see Bibi Zainab has portrayed from the first one, love of Allah. She has got it from the Quran and, her, and, her, and the Ahlul Bayt. Steadfastness is from the Quran. That she read the Quran, she understood it, that now the Quran was in her flesh and blood. That's why she was able to to so eloquently speak up against oppression. 
Today you think if you don't have the Quran inside you, even part of it, will you be able to speak up against oppression? Will you be able to, to give uh, your life? Am I, I'm asking myself first. Will I be able to give my life for the sake of the Imam if I do not have the Quran in me? The Quran itself complains that the Prophet complained that inna al Qur'ana mahjura that my my people have taken this Quran as something mahjur is something that you have done hijrat from means you know when you move from Arusha to maybe another place you have done hijrat yeah then you don't pay attention to Arusha so much sometimes once in a while you come back that is what Prophet is saying that my people have done this Quran as mahjur that now I have moved away I come to it in Ramadan once a while. Let us ask ourselves, let us do a self-check today in, on this night of Bibi Zainab's Kushali. That Bibi Zainab, how she did tarbiya of her children. That she herself used to read the Quran and then call her children. Not that she used to tell her children, recite the Quran and she was just there. So let us look at ourselves. Are we just instructing our children, recite the Quran, and ourselves we are not doing anything? Your children will never recite the Quran if you don't recite it. Your children will never practice the Quran if you do not practice the Quran. Having said that, we, we have, Alhamdulillah, I can say that we have parents in our communities who are trying their best, who are trying to bring the Quran into the lives of our children who are trying to bring malims at home make them recite they themselves are reciting the Quran they want their children to be good reciters not only reciters they want their children to become practicing Qurani people and that is what is required in our in our community that is one of the biggest things that is lacking and that is yet to be improved in our community recite a salawat please So my, my lecture has finished. Now we are going towards the presentation of the Quran. And that's why I have started talking about the Quran. I will just share a hadith with you. That Imam Ali alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. He said that the house in which Quran is recited. And Allah the noble, the grand is remembered. Will receive numerous divine blessings. The angels will be present. The shaitan will be distanced. In addition, that house will shimmer for the people of the sky. Just like the stars shimmer for the people of the earth. Just look at this hadith. It's like the complete package. You, don't, you want angels in your house. You don't want shaitan in your house. You want Allah to be and the angels to look from the skies and see your house as bright as a star. And how do you do that? By reciting the Quran, by remembering Allah in the house. And that is one of the ways of bringing this in. Inshallah, let us pray to Allah to give us this uh, tawfiq. First of all, to lead a life that is at least similar to Bibi Zainab. Bibi Zainab was not a masoom as a total masoom, but she had been given ismat because she strived for it. So it's not impossible to gain that kind of an ismat because Bibi Zainab was not the, is not amongst the 14 Masumi. But if you look at her life and if we put these four lessons into perspective and bring them into our lives, inshallah, we pray to Allah that we are able to bring them into our lives and be able to, uh, when Imam Zamana comes or even during this time, we're able to live this life such that Allah is pleased with us and we are pleased with Allah, inshallah. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Okay, so we had uh, a Quran competition and uh, a famous Quran competition that happens annually. The Africa Federation uh, organized Quran competition. It took place on 21st to 24th of July. And Alhamdulillah, we had representation from Arusha Jamaat. We had 24, 25 of our boys and 33 girls from our Jamaat who went to Dar es Salaam and participated in the Quran competition. Recite a salawat, please. Oh, 
In addition to that, we were able to get 10 trophies from the boys' side and four trophies from the girls' side in this Quran competition. We really want to thank the parents, first of all, for encouraging their children, for making sure that they, are, they attend the Quran classes that were prepared and they were practicing at home. And inshallah, up to now, I hope they are, they are practicing and reciting the Quran. We also wish to thank the Malims from both sides, the gents side and the ladies side, who took time out of their busy schedules in order to train these children. And the Hadith says that the best amongst you are those who teach, the, who learn the Quran and then teach it. So let us recite a salawat for these Malims. Allah. We'd also like to thank the mentors who took these participants to Dar es Salaam and uh, made sure that everything was arranged properly from the gent side, Brother Abbas Ali Karim, and from the lady side, Sister Sajida Safdar Hussain. We also recite a salawat for them, for them inshallah. <laughs> Coming to the presentation, um, so we'll be doing this presentation, we'll go like this. There are six categories. I will call the names of all the uh, of of each category, all the names from that category. They should come in front here, and uh, they will be presented their gift, and there will be a group photo per category. So let us let us um, uh, follow these uh, steps so that it's a quick process, and then we can be on time to see the Iran versus USA game, inshallah. Okay, so. I would like to call also from the ladies' side, the chair lady and her team, to come forward and, and uh, be ready for presenting the, uh, the appreciations for these participants and winners, inshallah. Let us recite a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So for the age category 8 to 10, I would like to invite Uncle Mustafa Lalji to please come forward and present uh, these gifts for this category, age to ten, uh, eight to ten. Uh, from the boys' side, we have Brother Hassan Ali Karim, Muhammad Kumail Khadim, Nasir Abbas Punja, and Ali Mahdi Shakir. So from these boys, Ali Mahdi Shakir be got first position, first position in the Hifz category at Afed level. Recite a loud salawat for all of them. From the ladies' side, we have Sister Fiza Sajan, Sister Zainab Gulam Hussain, Sister Zahra Bashir, Sister Zoya Ballu, Sister Salma Sharif, and Sister Sakina Bimani. Let us recite a loud salawat for all of them. Ali Mahdi Shakir is getting the trophy because he got first position in Afed. Inshallah. Let us recite another loud salawat for all of them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. The next category is the age group 10 to 12. I would like to invite. Uh, Sadiq Ankal Lada, to please come and present. Um, from the boys side, we had uh, Muhammad Raza Sajjad and Irfan Abbas Khadim. Please come forward and uh, receive your tokens. From the ladies side, we had Sister Hania Master and Sister Rabab Fatima Manik. We'd also like to call them up front. And let us recite a loud salawat for them. We move on to the 12 to 15 boys. Uh, we have Muhammad Hussein Raza, Abbas Murtaza, 
Muhammad Raza Rahim, Asim Rashid, who also became second in the quiz uh, category at, at, at AFED level. We have Muhammad Hassan Panjwani, who got first position in open recitation, and Muhammad Hussein Karim, who got first position in HIV. Let us all recite a loud salawat for them all. From the ladies' side, we had Sister Shirin Fatima, Sister Maryam Bak Bakri, Sister Sakina Imtiaz, Sister Sayyada Pardan, Sister Sakina Pardan, and Sister Zarmin Remtullah. Let us also recite a loud salawat for them. Allahumma <laughs> salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ahsant. Thank you. Wait. I would like to invite uh, Muhammad uh, Uncle Manjiwali to please come forward and uh, present this category. Uh, we have the 15 to 18 age category and from the boys side, Alhamdulillah we had a good number of boys who participated in this age category. We had Ali Damani, Zain Ali Rahim, Mahdi Sajan, Ali Rida Punja, Abbas Chivji, Hassan Datu, Wasim Raza, and we had Faizan Rashid who also came second in open Quran recitation at Afed, and Azhar Lalji who became second in quiz at Afed level. Let us recite a loud salawat for all of them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad From the ladies side we had Sister Sa Samia Murtaza, Sister Sajida Sharif, Sister Hina Ayaz, Sister Fatima Zahra Datu, Sister Sana Punja, who also came second in HIV, and Sister Sana Shakir, who, who, got, who got the first position in quiz at Afed. Let us recite a loud salawat for all of them. Muhammad. <laughs> Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Uh, for this age category 18 to 40, I would like to call uh, Fayaz Ankal Dirani to please come forward and uh, do the honors. From the boys' side, we had Muhammad Datu, we had Gibran Ramtullah and Mukarram Rashid. Gibran Ramtullah got second position in Hivs and Mukarram 
acquired the third position in both open recitation and in quiz. Let us recite aloud salawat for them. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. From the sister's side, we had Sister Mehdiya Sharif, Sister Khushbu Fatima, Sister Nazneen Rahim, Sister Rasha Imtiaz, Sister Arij Fatima, Sister Tahira Pardan, Sister Kiran Fatima Master, and Sister Fahm Fahmida Danji, who got second in open recitation and in Marifa. Let us recite aloud salawat for them all. Muhammad. <laughs> For the final category, I would like to call Maulana Saib, please, to come forward. Say it. With a loud, with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma <laughs> salli ala Muhammad wa um, we had, for, from the Jan side, we had our legendary Mali Muslim Sharif. Let us recite a loud salawat for him. He also became the first, he got the first position in open Quran recitation. A loud salawat for him. From the lady side, we had Sister Sajida Safdar Hussain, Sister Zainab Punja, Sister Sayyida Dirani, Sister Iram, Iram Mohsin, and Sister Zainab Sharif. Let us recite a loud salawat for them as well. <laughs> for those who were not here when their names were announced, you can collect them later, uh, the prizes. But if you really want to come now, come. Uh, if there are any ones who have not yet. Yeah, come. We can have uh, Papa. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We'd like to specially call on uh, Fazal Uncle Datu. His sons who are, are not here, they're in Dar. Uh, one is in Dar, one is in Iran. So on behalf of them, please come forward and collect their tokens, please. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We'll ask uh, uncle. Uncle, please. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Ahsan, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of this presentation. And as you can see, the nur of Quran is not limited to this. This is not the Mara Aitu Jamila that Bibi Zainab was saying. This is the material sense of the beauty. The beauty of the Quran is much more, is much more spiritual. It's much more such that when you have the Quran in your heart, 
and in your blood, that is when, when you talk, people will have the effect. You'll be able to make the right decisions. You'll be able to know that here, Allah wants me to do this. You'll not be in a dilemma. Inshallah, let us pray to Allah to give us that tawfiq, inshallah. Uh, Okay, just before uh, I take my seat, we have, uh, we have been having Wednesday Quran classes and Alhamdulillah, the attendance is, is not the best, but it can all, we can always improve on that. We have those boys who have been coming f on a regular basis and they are always there for the uh, Quran class and we would like to appreciate them. And it is their parents who are pushing them from home. So we'd like to even acknowledge the parents. So these boys, if they can come forward, there is a special gift for them as well. Uh, we have Irfa, Brother Irfan Abbas Rahim. We have Brother Mikdad Gulam Hussain. We have Brother Muhammad Raza Rahim. We have Brother Tahir Rajani and Brother Tanvir Turab. If we have these boys here with us, please come forward and get your gift inshallah sallu ala muhammad wa ali muhammad i would like to call mohsin uncle to present them the gift please mohsin bimji Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you very much, Hassant. This marks the end of uh, the presentation and my lecture. Thank you for bearing with me with so much patience. Um, but it is it is the kushali of uh, the lady of patience, so we all should have patience, uh, Hassant. And uh, I would like to call upon. Brother Aliaskar Kanani to continue with the um, proceedings. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Thank you, Dr. Ali. I hope we can allocate more of these events to you in the future for the MC that you were tonight. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbi ishrah li sadri wa assir li amri wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. I begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kind and the merciful. Ulama al-kiram, my elders, brothers and sisters, salamun alaykum wa rahmatullah. On behalf of the chairman of Arusha Jamaat, his managing committee, the office bearers and all of us at Tabligh, I extend my heartiest felicitations to the Imam of our time, Sahib Al Asr, Ajar Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, Allahumma Salli Ala Muhammad, wa Ali Muhammad, and all Mu'mineen across the globe, a very, a very happy Kushali Mubarak. Alf Mabruk to all the participants and the contenders that we have witnessed tonight, and the prize giving ceremony for them which has taken place for their exceptionally good performance in the Afid QC. I quote from the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Isra, Surah number 17, Ayah number 88. 
for all mankind to come together and wish to produce like the Quran, they would never succeed, however much they aided each other. An open challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh my messenger, ask them to bring a book alike. No. Ask them to bring 10 chapters alike. No. Ask them to bring only one chapter alike. Subhanallah. On behalf of our chairman, Al Haj Mustafa Baibirji, and his managing committee, I wish to sincerely appreciate the efforts and the support of the entire Quran committee and following are the individuals. The AFED QC team comprised of Azra Bai Sharif, Arifa Bai Shivji, Sajida Bai Safdar Hussein, Sayida Bai Dirani, Mehdiya Bai Sharif, Fatima Bai Mahmoud Sharif, Sakina Bai Habib. Let's recite salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The list continues and we have Malim Salim Manji, Malim Abbas Ali Karim, the MC of tonight, Malim Dr. Ali Askar Mukhtar, and Malim Shakil Sharif. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I would fail in my responsibility if I did not extend our sincere thanks to this one individual who has been busy day and night creating jembes, the axes of Quran in our community, tirelessly, selflessly, and, hard win and with hard work. This individual is none other than Malim Yasin. I'm advised that he's not been able to make it tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. Let us all recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A heartfelt appreciation is also extended to the parents, to the mentors, to all the sponsors, and all the individuals who have worked hard in making our community representation at QC AFED level possible and a remarkable one this year. Imam Sajjad, peace be upon him, has said, despite all the tragic events and the sufferings my aunt Lady Zainab experienced on our journey to Damascus. She did not miss her prayer vigils, her Salatul Layl, even for one night. Through the wasila of this holy lady, we pray to, the, we pray to Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to accept our amals, to forgive our shortcomings, to forgive the shortcomings of our parents, to forgive the shortcomings of our marhumin, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us shifa through this lady on the day of resurrection and to grant us an opportunity of her ziyara ilahi amin. Couple of announcements for tonight. Number one, consolation prizes for the participants from Arusha Jamaat on 24-hour quiz on Imam Mahdi during Solidarity Day. For this, I will humbly request our chair lady, Omtaz Bailadak, to present the following winners as I call out their names in the respective categories. I request the sisters to walk forward in their extension to collect the prizes from our chair lady. In category one, we have Sister Sayeda Maryam Zahra Bakari and Sister Fatima Nakwi. In category two, we have Zainab by Suhail Punja, Alina by Sharif, Fatima by Kesani, Sayeda Nargis Zahra Bakari, Sayeda by Kambar Ladda, and Sukaina by Salim Alfan. Let's recite salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The second announcement for tonight, on the birth occasion of our 11th Holy Imam, Imam Hassan al-Askari, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, the Arusha Jamaat embarked on the project of paving a Zahra Qabrastan. Any member wishing to contribute during this noble cause is requested to contact our honorary treasurer, Brother Hussein Sajan, or the deputy, the deputy treasurer, Brother Masal Fazl. Number three, our Jamaat 
takes pleasure in announcing the, Ma the Mapinduzi Festival, the Afed Inter Jamaat Sports Festival, Arusha, Tanzania. The dates for the festival, Thursday, 12th of January to Saturday, 15th of January, 2023, inshallah. The sports, we have volleyball, soccer, table tennis, badminton, and golf. Kind request to the brothers, inshallah, bring the prizes home. Number four, tonight, and on the auspicious birth occasion of Lady Zainab, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The Jamaat has embarked on the project of paving Jaffrey Nursery School. Once again, any member wishing to contribute towards this noble cause is requested to contact our honorary treasurer, Brother Hussein Sajan, or the deputy treasurer, Brother Mazhar Fazal. Your generous contributions will aid in both the above areas and will be highly appreciated. Before I end, I now welcome on stage Team Azadari to come forward and to enlighten this gathering tonight with a few lines of poetry. Let's welcome them all with salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Ki kya shan hai 
کیا بتاؤں میں زیناب کی کیا شان ہے اس کی کتب کتابت کی سردار ہے اس کے نانا شریعت کے سردار ہے باپ اور ماں شرافت کے سردار ہے دو بڑے بھائی جنت کے سردار ہے چھوٹا بھائی وفاؤں کا سلطان ہے کیا زیناب کی کیا شان ہے کیا بتاؤں میں زیناب کی کیا شان ہے کل ایمان کی ایمان کا مان ہے کیا بتاؤں میں زیناب کی کیا شان ہے کیا بتاؤں میں زیناب کی کیا شان ہے عبدالسلام محمد و آل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى لي ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء السلطون بالحسن علي بن موسى الرضا كن شفيانا وشفيا والدينا في يوم الجزاء وفقنا الله لزيارتك يا مولاي ورزقنا الله شفاءتك في الدنيا والآخرة ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا حجة الله يا ابن الحسن يا ساهب الأسر والزمان سيدي الأمان 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 السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا كعبة الإيمان السلام عليك يا إمامي وإمام الإنس والجان عجل الله تعالى فرجك وسحل الله مخرجك وذهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته